last few grains of sand are running through the hourglass. And the evildoers are apoplectic because they know that the good, decent, upright people are seeing a light at the end. They know that evil can't get away with this forever. So they know that that light is beginning to appear at the end of the tunnel. Like God is going to, he's going to put his foot down one way or another sooner or later. And that's what's going to make the positive changes in our land. That's our only hope. It is not going to be because your gang got into office for a long enough period and enough of them and it had a critical mass and all that. It, it's bull. Remember what happened in 2008. 90% of the American people, okay, a lot of conservatives, a lot of liberals, a lot of socialists, a lot of capitalists, a lot of Democrats, a lot of Republicans were against bailing out those criminal banksters. Remember that. We were all a team then, together. We put down our differences, and we agreed. But look what went through anyhow. So what makes you think that when your gang gets in long enough that things are going to change for the better, for the, the people at the bottom, people that are bleeding out, that are hemorrhaging at the bottom, okay, where we need to bind the wound, the people that are dying out in the cold first, in, in an orderly, logical manner is how we need to approach this thing. That's where we need to, you know, fix this thing go for the jugular it's a federal reserve banker and all those that would support it that have done this to us the money masters of misery these are the masterminds the grand puppeteers these are the <laughs> the diabolical masters <laughs> and um that's their religion these are the ones at the top of the dung heap so this is going for the jugular going for the throat you're putting the axe to the root it's that Federal Reserve. We've got until, you know, until I see God really shaking up our monetary system. And we need an, a total reset of reality here. A total reset. Okay, because we're, we're cooked, folks. We're all dead. I mean, we're, we're sitting ducks, all of us. They're going to just devour us more and more if they are allowed to get away with this. You give these people an inch, it'll take them a mile. And how much have we given them? We've given them inch after inch and then foot after foot. And meter after meter, yard after yard, and, you know, mile after mile, we've given them latitude. So what do we expect? I mean, these people are just gung-ho. We're just going to make more poverty. If we can get away with it, we're going to push this envelope as far as we can. And we're just going to make this debt as high as we can, make the problem as bad as we can, and just loot this place as much as we can and steal it. And that's it, man. I mean, that's my... It, a lot of these people don't care about conscience. Apparently, by the evidence, they have just abandoned their conscience and caring. Okay, that's what I think of your Chuck Schumers and your Nancy Pelosi's. I think they could be on pharmaceuticals. So it's legal drugs. They could be on their doctor. Take this, take that. When normally their conscience would be quickened, but they got these drugs that are numbing out the natural drugs that God put in their body to make them have some compunction here, man. What are you doing? What do you stand for? Are you really working for the American people at large or are you working for special interest groups? <laughs> how come you're amassing these great fortunes? What is it with these politicians? I mean, look into how much money Feinstein is worth and Pelosi and Schumer, all these people. What is it? I mean, with these politicians, I mean, they're pleasing their masters. You see, these are the people that pay the most taxes. Really, I mean, it's the irony here, too, because it's our taxes that pay these politicians. And then, well, they think there's something because, well, you know what I pay in tax? They're giving back a little bit of what they take. It's the same, the bankster industry. That's what happened in 2008. Those criminals should have been allowed to fall on their faces and bust out their collective criminal bankster teeth, okay? But did we allow, did, we the people were out of luck. So that's what I'm saying. I'm saying a critical mass is a tiny amount of people to get the job done. So that's who's steering this ship of fools to destruction, okay, is a tiny critical mass of establishmentarians that are deeply embedded in the establishment. They are in positions of power, great power. These are your Bilderberger or ilk. These are the ones that are controlling what comes out of the mainstream media. These are the ones that turn mountains of news that the people are very interested in into molehills, as into little blurbs that they slant at that. Okay, and these are the ones that turn mol, uh, mountains into molehills, that are molehills into mountains. They'll take a little a blemish on, on Donald Trump and they'll say, oh, wow, what's this Russia? He was going to build a hotel. Don't, was he colluding? <laughs> you know, what was the favor for favor? Quid pro quo he was making with Putin and all this and Russia. And we want to know. And it's like, dude, it's a non-starter. I mean, we're supposed to have good relations with this most powerful or next most powerful nation on earth. 
Of course we are. We want good relations with these people. We want peace on earth, don't we? So we want the leaders of America to talk to the leaders of Russia and of China and everywhere. We want peace on earth, man, not strife. We want You need to make concessions for peace sometimes. But that's, you know, this idea that Trump and this, how many, two years, over two years now into his presidency, this investigation is still going on. And now they're arresting Roger Stone. For God knows what. I mean, I heard what they said about what it was about. And it's like, what in the hell are they talking? He's got a crooked toenail, did you say? I mean, you know, Roger Trump says they're trying to get him to, uh, to make allegations that are false against Donald Trump. That's according to Roger Stone. And he says, well, I'm not going to do it. If they send me to jail for, for not lying, then so be it. You know, let God's will be done. This Cohen character... This guy, I, I hope he's in the hot seat of the Senate like they're trying to get him in there. I mean, this guy is squirrely as all get out. I don't know what the hell his problem is. But remember this, that if you have a lawyer, a counselor, remember, lawyers, attorneys, counselor, that's what they are. They're, count, they're telling you the law. So if a client says to do something illegal, if that's because that's the allegation that Cohen is making against Trump, then he is the one that's breaking the law. It's his fault if his client does something illegal before the fact, okay? Not after the fact, okay, but before. So if on the advice, on the counsel of his lawyer, his attorney, Cohen, Trump did something, then that is Cohen's problem, okay? I mean, it, wouldn't you want that from your lawyer? If he said, well, I, I ill inform my client. I knew the difference between right and wrong. I knew the law, and I advised my client to break the law. Do you, you get the logic I'm trying to... But is the mainstream media helped you understand this thing like that? So I don't know what the hell's going on here. I really don't. But uh, Jerome Corsi is another guy. I thought he was a good guy, and it turns out he was into some fishy. Uh, this Julian Assange, I thought he was a good guy. I don't know what the hell's going on here. But why he was hated is because he was exposing some dark, dirty deeds of Hillary Clinton. So they've got a lot of power, these people. But they don't run the FBI. We're talking about a handful of people, black hats in these agencies, a critical mass to do heinous things. Heinous things, just like 9-11. Do I blame our, our government, Who, depending on how we... Uh, no, I blame a handful of black hats working in the government for allowing this. That's it. It's just like JFK. Who was it? It wasn't the government. A few black hats working in the right places, right positions, colluding together, setting it up, conspiring. Do you understand? That's what's going on here. So, you know, let's be very clear on who the government is. A few black hats in the FBI or the CIA or some other intelligence agency. No, you know. So, anyhow. Well, folks, um, just remember, the good guys are going to win this fight, okay? As much as it looks like it's a losing battle. You know, with, with men of the caliber of Martin Luther King Jr. and JFK, okay, getting murdered, okay, uh, is, is pretty discouraging, I admit. But you know what? These men... Their lives were not in vain because the things that they taught and the things they tried to give the American people are embedded in our psyche. And that's a gift that just keeps on giving, that we celebrate these people. And those are two men that my dad and I were in complete agreement about. We both cherished and adored Martin Luther King Jr. and JFK. I'm very happy to state that unequivocally. So we were very bonded, as different as we were maybe in approaches, because in my mind, this whole socialist thing, what it means to most people is it's the Robin Hood thing. It's, it's redistribution of wealth by authoritarianly. See, this is where I object. You, you can't, if you made it fun, like, you know, we could gamble, at least the rich could gamble their money away, you know. Uh, It'd be one thing, but when you can't just authoritarianly take, that's theft. You can't take from one group and give to another and call it justice. Okay, so on its face, that's why the socialism I think most people think of that they're, they're shooting for doesn't want